Good morning, my real news media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, man accused of killing homeless people to face a committal hearing. Ronaldo Ricketts, the man accused of killing several homeless people in Montego Bay between July and August 2023, is to have a committal hearing in the St. James Parish Court on May 13. The matter was set for a committal hearing on Monday to determine whether Ricketts' case would be tried in the St. James Circuit Court. However, the hearing could not proceed as he was not brought to court. The court was informed that the defendant had undergone a psychiatric evaluation and was diagnosed with schizophrenia. It was also noted that Ricketts is currently on specific medications for his condition and requires a close monitoring. However, despite his diagnosis, the report confirmed that he was mentally competent to plead. The matter was subsequently set for a committal hearing on May 13, when Ricketts will be brought before the court. Ricketts was arrested by the police on August 30, 2023, in relation to the charge of abduction, following allegations that he picked up the complainant along Humber Avenue in downtown Montego Bay and drove her to Melville Hall Avenue before pulling a knife and demanding sex from her. The woman managed to escape from the car and screamed for help, getting the attention of nearby police officers who were on patrol at the time. Ricketts was subsequently detained and taken into custody by the officers. It is further alleged that while he was in custody for that incident, Ricketts confessed to the killings of four homeless people in sections of Montego Bay between July 28 and August 20 last year. It is understood that all the victims were stabbed with a sharp instrument while they were sleeping. Residents stumbled on man's body in Clarendon. The body of a man was found by residents at a dam wall district in Hayes Clarendon on Monday afternoon. Up to press time, the body had not been identified, police said. Reports reaching the news indicated that around 2.34 p.m., residents stumbled on the body and contacted the authorities. On arrival, police saw the body of a male in a heavily vegetated area lying on its back, clad in a black hoodie, black shirt, grey jeans pants and black combat shoes. The deceased appeared to be in his 30s, about 5 feet 8 inches tall and medium build. He had wounds to the neck and upper body and a blood-soaked backpack on his back. Man dead, others injured in three-vehicle crash on Mandela Highway. A man is dead and several others injured following a three-vehicle collision along the Mandela Highway in St. Catherine on Sunday. It is reported that a Toyota Pro Box, a white Honda Fit, and a green Nissan March were heading east on the highway when the driver of the Toyota Pro Box lost the control of the vehicle and collided with the Honda Fit. The Toyota Pro Box further swerved into the back of the Nissan March motor vehicle, causing it to overturn. The drivers and the occupants of all three vehicles were transported to the hospital where the driver of the Nissan March was pronounced dead. The fatal collision occurred around 8.26 p.m. closer to the Municipal Boulevard intersection. Thieves make off with $1 million from Pink's Fabric Store in West Marland. Thieves reportedly made off with $1 million from Pink's Fabric Store on Greater George's Street in Savannah Lamar, West Marland over the weekend. Reports from the police are that on Saturday, May 4, at about 5.30 p.m., the store was reportedly secured by the owner before departure. However, the following morning, at around 9 a.m., the business owner reportedly received a telephone call from one of the employees who informed her that the back door of the establishment was open. Subsequent checks showed that the establishment was broken into. The police were then summoned. Upon the arrival of the lawmen, it was discovered that the culprit's pride opened the metal door at the back cutting the padlocks on the grill to gain access to the building. Reports are that $1 million was missing from a metal safe. Government moves to clarify controversy surrounding charter flight that landed in Jamaica. The government has moved to clarify the controversy surrounding the charter flight that landed at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston on Friday. The flight included 253 passengers, including crew members. In a statement to Monday afternoon, the Minister of National Security, 
says that the foreigners are currently at the Norman Manley International Airport awaiting the finalization of arrangements for their departure. On the matter of their stay at the Rock Hotel in downtown Kingston, the ministry says, given the duration of the flight and the civil aviation regulations for the minimum rest period before clearance is given to safely operate, it was deemed impractical to detain the passengers in the aircraft or at the airport. It further adds that the travelers and airline crew members were allowed to leave the airport on humanitarian grounds under guard. However, the news saw several of the passengers moving freely around the downtown Kingston on the weekend. The ministry emphasizes that this form of supervised release is in keeping with the provisions of the Immigration Restriction, Commonwealth Citizens Act, and Aliens Act. The ministry says accommodation and return cost will solely be the responsibility of USC GMBH, the charter company. Meanwhile, the government says that the flight was allowed to land in Jamaica, having received the requisite approvals for operation from the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority. It says that despite having arrangements in place for accommodation at the departure from Jamaica, the passengers were refused entry by immigration officials based on security concerns uncovered during their processing at the airport. The Passport Immigration and the Citizenship Agency and the Jamaica Constabulary Force have been leading the operational response since their arrival. In this instance, while the ministry was alerted to the operation of the flight, based on what appeared to be anomalies and the missing details from its initial permit application, the necessary supporting documents were later supplied to satisfy the requirements for obtaining a permit to operate to Jamaica. Notwithstanding, the ministry continued to consult with law enforcement while the flight received the clearance to operate and the immigration authorities undertook pre-screening activities as per standard operating procedures. Upon landing in Jamaica, it was discovered that there were two passengers on the flight that did not appear on the submitted passenger manifest. This led to further investigations by PICO, which prompted the decision not to grant the passengers leave to land in Jamaica. The managing director of USC Airline Charter Company, Klaus Martin, has accused the Jamaican authorities of breaching international law by impounding the plane on the tarmac at the Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston. It was detained while the authorities carry out an investigation into a suspected human trafficking operation. But Mr. Martin said he is not aware of any trafficking. He told the news that no information has been forthcoming from Jamaican authorities about the reasons for preventing the flight from leaving. Until the very day, I don't know. Uh, the citizens we had on board do not require a visa for Jamaica. We brought them there in good intention and also to pick them up in good intention. They were then refused. We, until the very day, we do not have a statement from the Jamaican authorities why we are being detained or why we are being delayed to leave again. This is unacceptable and we have still, up to the very time, received no explanation what is going on. And initially the flight, and I think this caused some hesitation, the flight was to go there, drop off the passengers, the crew does 14 hours rest, then we would have gone ferry flight to Havana, ferry, as I said, empty, to Havana. We have some passengers waiting there since a week now to be picked up and to be brought back to their destination, and then we would have returned to pick up these passengers again and bring the phone them back. This was our itinerary. 60 rounds of ammunition seized in St. James the St. James Police seized the 60 assorted rounds of ammunition and a magazine during an operation on Pelly Drive in Flankers on Monday. The police report that about 2 p.m., lawmen carried out a search at an unoccupied premises where a .45 extended magazine, 46 7.62, 12.45, and the 2 9mm rounds of ammunition seized. No one was arrested in relation to the seizure. Investigation continues.